Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn. I'm going to do a quick video showing how to make custom trays using Mesh Mixer. Now, this is something you can do in Blue Sky Plan. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily give you all that much of a spacer. So let's say you wanted to do an open tray uh, impression, uh, custom impression tray for this case to do an implant impression. There's really not an ideal way in Blue Sky Plan currently to do uh, let's say a three millimeter spacer for impression material. So I'm going to show you how you would do that in Mesh Mixer. First of all, I've got my model. I've opened it here. I'm going to go to the Select tool, and I'm going to make a relatively large brush size, and just begin selecting the area that I want my custom impression tray to encompass. So I'll just paint this in. If you uh, go too far on an area, if you hold down the shift key, then just using the tool in the same way, it now becomes an erase. And so I'm going to come up and over the molar. And we're just going to color all this surface in. Okay, so now we have all of the surface that we want our tray to encompass. What I'm going to do now is go over to Modify and Smooth the Boundary. Now what this will do is take it from a jagged boundary down to this very smooth boundary that you see here. Accept that, and now you can see a much smoother boundary on this. Now it's still selected. I'll go to Edit, and we're going to offset this. Now offset is just going to, as the name would imply, offset this by whatever amount you have indicated in this distance. So I would like to offset this by three millimeters. So I'll accept that. And as you can see here, this is what happens. The, the surface will just be, uh, for lack of a better term, it, it just grows it out in every direction uh, from what you have by three millimeters. So let's accept that. Now you see that right now this is all still a single STL surface. So while this is all still selected, I'm going to go up to edit and choose separate. And what that does now is it's created an independent STL surface of this object. Okay. So a couple of little things we can do to make this process go smoother. First of all, go to your select tool, make a really small brush size, and just come down and click right on the boundary. You can also uh, expand the ring. So expand the ring, if you watch that orange boundary, when I click this, it just expands it by one triangle uh, further inward. So when I do that, I'm gonna come up now and say smooth the boundary. Once again, I'm just trying to smooth things out uh, where you might have created some stray triangles in that process. Okay, so this is looking nice. I'm going to go now, double click the entire surface, and I want to now deform and smooth this. Okay, I want this to be as smooth of a surface as possible for the next step. Now, be mindful that you want to look at it, and if you have any areas here where it looks like it's crossing over itself, then what you're going to want to do is come to your Sculpt uh, Tools, Brushes, Robust Smooth, and we'll just make a large brush size and just give that a click, quick, uh, click smooth that out so that it's no longer uh, crossing over itself. Okay, We want this to be a nice flowing surface uh, with no areas like that where the mesh is crossing over itself. Alright, so that looks good. Again, back to Select. I can select uh, a piece of this, so I could double click this, but because I've got multiple face groups, it doesn't select this. So one good option is just come over here to modify, say select all. That way everything that's showing on the screen here, all the face groups, it's just going to select them all. So we've got it all selected now. This time I'm going to go to edit and extrude. Okay, I want to extrude this by three millimeters because I want the, uh, the thickness of my tray to be three millimeters. Now you're going to notice that right now it's extruding only upwards in this direction. 
I would like to grow it in every direction. So instead of uh, constant here or X, Y, and Z, I want to choose normal. Okay, and you can see the change that that makes. When I choose normal, now it just grows this out in every direction. Uh, this looks nice now. So the first step, when I offset it by three millimeters, that created the space for impression material. So if I turn this on now, you can see there's a three millimeter spacer between uh, the tooth surface, the tissue surface, and the inside of my tray. That's plenty of room for your PVS material. And now I also have a three millimeter thickness to this by extruding it. Now, if I come up here and clear this selection, when you do that last step, it's inevitably going to create some little spikes like you see here. That's very easy to deal with. Go to your sculpt tool, brushes, and robust smooth and just briefly pass over that and you'll see those uh, little spikes disappear I would suggest maybe just doing a once over on all your margins just to make sure everything is smooth no jagged pieces you want to make sure that this is all going to print nicely All right, that looks great. So now we have our custom impression tray. The last thing you might want to consider doing is putting a handle on this. Okay, that's going to be awfully difficult to remove this from the mouth. Uh, if you fill it up with impression material, it's got such an intimate fit. Uh, you're going to definitely need a handle on this. So select tool. Oops, clear that. Select. Think of where you want your handle. In this case, I'm going to extend the handle off of this area right here. Push T on your uh, keyboard for transform. And you can now pull a handle off of this. All right. I'll accept that. Clear the selection. Now I can select again. And this time I'm going to extend it more forward. So I kind of have two planes to this handle. T for transform, pull this straight out, and accept. And that should more or less complete your custom impression tray. Um, I'll just show you real quickly. I won't really do it on a, a critical area. Another option if you wanted to do it that's really quick and easy, if you go to your brushes and choose inflate, you get a pretty big brush size, and you can just sit here and hold that extend a uh, handle off of it this way as you can see and then if I wanted to change directions with it I could just keep coming in whatever direction I'm holding that but I like the first method better so I'm going to undo those two things this is your finalized custom impression tray this is ready to uh, now go up and and just one last look so you can see what this looks like very nice. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. So let's suppose that we wanted to create that hole uh, for the um, impression transfer to, to protrude through. Let's say we wanted to do an open tray impression. How can you create that hole? number of different ways you can do it. The one I like to do is I like to come up here to Mesh Mix. And there's all these stock shapes that are in Mesh Mixer. Grab this cylinder and just drag it over into this case. Okay. It's going to be an enormous cylinder, but what you can do is come over here in its uh, dimensions. Let's make this 10 millimeters and make sure you've got uniform scaling on. Click, and when you do that, you can see now that this is a much smaller dimension. And I'm going to pull this over into the area of where I want to create that hole for the impression transfer to pass through. So that's going to be right about in here. And 10 millimeters looks a little bit too small. Let's go to 15. I like that better. Now I want this to pass all of the way through my impression tray. I want to be mindful of, of where it's oriented. I don't want to cut things too thin here. Because what I'm going to do is subtract this cylinder shape from my impression tray. So I don't want to leave any little uh, nibs like that. So you can grab this uh, square on top and just make it long like so. And now you can see this is passing through. Now I'll accept it. You see that this gets added as another mesh in the case. 
So here's how you do the subtraction. This is what's known as a Boolean subtraction. Come up, select your um, uh, impression tray. Now hold down Control on your keyboard and click the mesh. Now you've got two models selected here. When I do that, this option comes up and I'm going to select Boolean difference. You can see that it subtracts that away. And one thing that I would advise you do is come over here and un uncheck this uh, box that says auto reduce. And now you can accept this. And here is your completed impression tray. You could now go to file, export, save this as whatever you want to call it, custom impression tray for whatever patient. And now you're ready to print. Um, and this should work very well. So relatively quick, easy way to do this. Uh, the five minutes you're going to spend on creating this will hopefully make up for itself in lots of saved impression material and an easier, more accurate impression. Uh, so I hope you found that useful.